Hello everyone, welcome back. Thanks for tuning in. So in this video today, this is gonna be a mini series, part one of three. I wanna ask you for your help. I wanna learn from you. I'm not an expert, never claimed to be. And as some would say, I'm an appliance operator and that's fine. But the best expert that I can ask is you. Those out there that are electronics technicians, I can do some soldering, I can do some basic troubleshooting, I can do some you know, isolation and repair, but I don't know much about things like this more than you do, okay? You know a lot more, somebody out there does. And what I wanna do is I wanna show you, I have, a, I have a project for this. This is a Mirage D1010. Yes, this is a 430 to 450 megahertz, 10 watts in, 100 watts output amplifier. I bought it broken and it may be something simple. I'm not sure. I've already done some testing on some things. I'm gonna show you what I did. But this video is not about, well, you should have bought this or you should have bought that. I paid $20 for this and it's actually gotten more scratched up and beat up than it was when I got it. It looked almost mint when I got it, but I've had it for a couple years and I really wanna get this project going. So maybe I could ask you some questions. I took this to Jim, uh, my buddy Jim, who knows about this stuff, and he gave me some pointers, and I wanna see what you guys think. And maybe after a bunch of comments, leave your comments below. After I tell you what is wrong with this and what I've already tested and tried learning, I, I did pull up one schematic. Um, I had one of these years ago, it was the brown face model. You know, the, the older Mirages had the brown face, light and, light and dark two-tone brown. And uh, I don't think that one had a preamp on it. I don't remember. There's a, a, an issue with this, and it may be something simple. Like I said, it may be something more severe. But I, I think somebody out there knows what they're doing. And let's make this fun. Let's make this interactive. Show me. I'll, I'll take this part right now. I've got the cover off. And I'll show you in close-up what I've learned so far, what I've looked at. And then you leave a comment. And after I do some testing and reading all the comments, I'll make another video and update and try to answer all those comments and see what I've tested already, what did work, what didn't. Maybe somebody hits it on the nail the first shot. I don't know. And uh, we'll go from there. So let's get right into it. A big shout out to Mr. Carlson's lab. You know, that guy, if I sent this to him, he'd rebuild it better than the way it was manufactured. Uh, and I don't, really don't want to email him and comment, hey, what do you think here? Because the guy's got enough to do, right? All right. Now, the last time I made a video pointing into something that revolved around electronics with something metallic, I got yelled at. So what I'm going to do now is take this little GMRS antenna and use it as a pointer. And hopefully you can see. Now, do not, under any circumstances, look at these wires and assume this is how it was built. I had already cut the zip ties off so I could start moving stuff. Everything was really neatly zip tied, although Jim had said, when well, he looked at it, he said, do you notice how some of these wires are a little longer and normal than they bunched them up like this? Okay, they went like this and all the ones. And that's fine, whatever. I don't care what the inside of this looks like, man. I just want it to work. Now, from my understanding, I, I get it. It's a solid state amplifier, um, push-pull technology, if I'm right. And it's very, you know, discrete components here. There's no ICs in here. There's no uh, any kind of, you know, integrated circuits, okay? So I put power poles on here. And when I hook this to a battery or a power supply or whatever, I verified power is going in here, yes, it does not turn on. The light doesn't turn on, okay? Now, let's just, just follow along with me for a second. Nothing. Now, immediately I thought, well, you know, we got to see if there's power going on the switch. No, it doesn't work that way. From my understanding, what I see is, and what I've read online and looked at the schematics, is that the power that comes in goes first through this right here. And I've tested this, okay? You got to this board, there's your power. Through the fuse, the fuse is good. I, I hope you can see that. I hope you can see that, all right? Fuse is good right here. Then it goes through this diode, which is right here. I guess that would be a reverse polarity diode. That is testing good. Then it jumps over here on this sandbar resistor or wire wound resistor, whatever you want to call that. Okay, so I have power going through this to this board and I have power uh, over here on the end of this here to this board and then I have some sort of power over here but then it got to testing the finals and I know that you can't from from my experience I know that you can't test finals when they're in the circuit here because you know whatever but I did have voltage up too but I'm not sure this is the first part of this series tell me the best way to check these these are two MRF 648s and this is an MRF 644 upside down so I'm guessing you know you have um, 
the power in to here, and then this one will drive these two. Maybe if that's the way that works. Okay. Comments and suggestions are open here. I know that these are bias resistors, and I know that these are a match set, and that you have to do them, you know, matched. Maybe the finals are bad, but would if the finals in this were bad, would it prevent the power from energizing whatever to turn this thing on? Uh, you know, in my day, I I know that if I burned down an amplifier, whether it be for CB or whatever, the ham, whatever, little solid states, it would turn on and you get zero power output, or it would be a dead short in the SWR meter. This doesn't turn on at all. But when I started poking around with the meter, I could tell you that I had like the negative on the chassis screw here and I went positive to like one side of this and in, in, in process of doing something there, the, the light turned on in the front. Was I coupling through the meter to, to bridge voltage across this? I'm not sure, you know, um, I might've even been testing, you know, one leg of the meter here, one leg of the meter here, and, and the light came on. I'm like, well, that's weird. But then when I looked at the meter that was in line with this, the voltage was going down. So maybe I was actually shorting something. I don't know, okay? Um, I know that this is the transmit, receive, switching relay, probably for the, the section with the preamp, so that when you turn the preamp on and receive and transmit, and you transmit and energize it. But I think the problem is before even that, because you, know, you, you got a couple of thermistors here, or diode, thermistor, are these problematic? Could that be the cause? I think the first thing I wanna know is, when I apply power to this, aside from all this other stuff up here, got some diodes, some, some ceramic, mic, uh, ceramic uh, disc capacitors, some electrolytics, some resistors, uh, looks like a rectifier here, or something here, I'm not sure. Some adjustments, probably for the single sideband delay, and uh, some other stuff, but aside from that, I think first I need to figure out what's going on in here. So if you can give me an idea, okay, and I'll give you a close up here because you may not be able to see this. Here you go, let's do a close up. Let's hold it there for a second while I talk, okay? So if the power is going through that fuse, through that diode, jumping across over to, yeah, right here. I'm upside down, that's why, okay. Right here, you know, it's going through the, the fuse, coming up here. Okay, I have power here and I have power on this board, but where do I test first? Another thing I have a question on is, look at those, those transistors there. Those have what appears to be little capacitors on the legs. And if I were to unsolder these to take these tabs up or take the finals out to, to test them, do I have to solder those back on? That, I, I've never seen anything like that before. Is that something for you? For UHF or VHF amplifiers, I'm not sure. Um, so your comments are, are welcome below. Other than I'm an idiot, I'm stupid, I should buy an amplifier, I should refer to electronics tech. Let me tell you something. I am referring to electronics tech, and the best way to be a good ham operator is to learn. And if there's something that you can teach me, ignore the negative comments and teach me and educate me because I want to learn. I'm not going to bring this to an event and try to get people to waste their time looking at it here. You got nothing better to do but watch videos. Tell me what I'm doing here. Tell me what to look at. And um, if you have any other suggestions, let me know. If you have a set of those finals and we do determine they're bad, maybe you can give me a decent price and I could throw you a few bucks for them or something. You're gonna see this in a project in the future very soon. I'm not gonna tell you what the project is yet, but I really want this thing to work. Uh, this amplifier, if you buy it from MFJ, I think it's $5.99. Uh, from Mirage, rather, which MFJ is parent company, I guess. And uh, this thing, when I got it, it, looked pretty clean. All the wires were tied up there. Nobody had been in this thing. It appeared. And I assumed, well, this would be easy fix. I was, you know, really. And somebody said, oh, that's very easy. Okay, well, if it's easy, then show me. Please, please educate me. And then maybe I can start working on other amps that I find used on eBay that are burned out. Uh, until then, thank you for watching. I hope that uh, I learned something from this. Thanks for watching. 7-3. Look forward to the comments. KJ4YZI.